Hello. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, my thanks go to the hosts of this conference, the ICDH, for the honorable invitation and for the professional preparation of my online presentation. Uh, with great interest, I heard the speech of Professor Su, and as he addressed me personally in his, his speech, uh, I, with great interest, I heard his work on constructing a narrative on the registers items and his proposal to include stronger historians of all kinds, and I agree completely. Um, it's not only archivists, librarians, or staff of museums that should work on the program, but, uh, for example, historians, because you don't even can give the significance of a document uh, if you don't include in his, historians in many, in many uh, questions. But that would need another conference. It could be called Memory Institutions and Historians. How can they cooperate for memory of the world? Next, please. Okay. Uh, in my presentation, I will try to come close to the ICDH expectations of my presentation as laid down in your concept of session two and of my presentation. You can have it on the screen, have a look on that. For that purpose, I will make a choice of our, our SEER, features and projects. Um, let me implement some, some more words that were not prepared. In the light of the ongoing wars, I want to make a word on peace building, which is one of, the, of your key words of my presentation. Uh, I remember very well the IEC meeting in Paris nearly exactly six years ago. I had to chair as the chair was absent. Among some other difficult nominations was a very difficult case of the comfort women. We could not bring it to a decision. You know that the process of the reform of memory of the world started afterwards. Sometime before this meeting, an IEC member said, Member of the world cannot solve the, the problems behind such nominations. They should be treated by the UN in New York. The keynote speaker of session two, we heard him, my honorable colleague, Professor Sue, published an article, History Wars and the Memory of the World, the documents on the, of the Nanji Massacre and the Comfort Women. History Wars and Memory of the World. They could not be healed by the experts of the IEC, nor of the subcommittees. And so we can't stop the real wars of our time and the military tensions, for example, in your region. Taking all this into regard, including my experience in the IEC, please understand that the task of peace building is too big for a small committee of experts like SEER. So I just speak about international cooperation as a modest variant of peace building. And please keep in mind that the CIA has no budget, not one dollar. That is another reason why I should use a mod modest terminology. Next slide, please. Now, one of the CIA's main features is the network of member world knowledge centers. They are based on a memorandum of understanding between the CIA and the carrying or otherwise responsible institutions. They are situated in bigger archives, libraries, or universities, or academies. And the centers are special archives or libraries with various functions. They collect material and memory of the world and documentary heritage, mainly connected to items of the Mo registers. They provide activities for education and research on Mo and help to mediate uh, these questions to a wider audience. Next slide, please. This, this was the opening of the first center uh, in Macau. It's in the university library in the city university of, of Macau. On the right side, the president of the university. On the left, Dr. Helen Young, director of the center. And now she is coordinator of our working group on the centers. Next slide, please. Well, these are the centers we could open since 2016. Four in China, including Macau, one in Korea, in Andong, one in the Ivory Coast, one in Mexico. We have an Australian center. I 
call it pending whether well, some little technical questions that will be solved soon by the goodwill of all parties. And the latest one is the Mo Knowledge Center Kyrgyzstan, which uh, the MOU for it was just signed some weeks ago. So we have, at the moment, we have nine centers. Next slide, please. Concerning that, we have a, um, opened a working group, member of knowledge centers. Basically, the centers work on the national or subnational national level. They provide, collect materials, they bring it to, the, to their audience, to their experts, to the universities, to schools, to, to a wider audience. This is always the first step to work for the national and local people, for the centers. But then it's another step necessary that they bring their knowledge and give access to, to their knowledge to an international audience. And to help making that possible, we created this working group. You can have more information on that in the CN newsletter, Special Issue 2022. There we nearly 80 pages uh, describing the history and the work of, of the centers. Next slide, please. Yeah. I want to give you an example, a uh, very recent example that fits very well to the concept of session two, that is um, foster knowledge through scientific, historical, literary sources of documentary heritage and production of cultural content, including games, gaming. Now, we had a creative competition for university students on Chinese documentary heritage listed on the Memory of the World Register. It, uh, the, the finals were just in May this year. This was organized by 17 institutions. The, one of the guiding institutions was the Memory of the Knowledge Center in Beijing. Three other centers were uh, among the organizers, and so was the CEO Working Group members of all those centers. Now, the task was to pro collect creative works. The students had to create cre works that focus on the preservation, promotion, and utilization of the 19th Chinese documentary heritage listed in the Mo World Register and Asia Pacific Register. This included animation, games, creative products, uh, and research. I think this is one of the most important activities for members of the world uh, at all so far. And this is a good, it's, it's a pioneering project concerning academic education, and it's a very large one. And I think that could be inspiration on the international level and on the level of other uh, countries as well. Next, please. This is just a photo of the finalists in Renmin University in May this year. Next, please. Now, another feature of us is the network of partners that we have, of cooperating institutions and corresponding members. This year is a very small committee, and we need the expertise of staff of memory institutions, of university people, uh, and among the, as I see on the screen, Ray Edmondson, and Anka Claudia Prodan, both are corresponding members, and their, their work, as you know, has been very helpful for the whole program. Uh, we are open, by the way, of course, for, for experts, more experts for having more members. Next, please. Now, so this is one impact, so to say, of the work of Cecilia is this book. It was inspired more by Anka Claudia Prova, to be fair and edited by Ray, by her, and by me. But two thirds of the authors were either members of the SEER or corresponding members of it. So, so um, it was a good cooperation from the network with the, with the other editors, with uh, Anka, Claudia Prodan, and with Ray. Next, please. Now, for our international communication, we created the SEER newsletter. It comes out two, twice a year. This is the latest one. It's basically for CM members, for our partners, but open to other authors as well. And there, we had a lot of articles that had a for, for, treated matters for the first time, like an article by Luciana Duranti on artificial intelligence and, uh, and documentary heritage. I think there was a first, first presentation so far, in the, at least in, in memory of the world, which w went on uh, artificial intelligence. Next, please. 
Now, we have special issues of the CN newsletter, let's say one, a, one per year. And this leads over to the main uh, subject that we treat and will be a, one of the main parts of my small presentation. This is disaster risk reduction. And you can see that um, in the COVID times, we could, could help to keep the discourses on disaster risk reduction on. There were two political for two World Global Policy Fora in Paris, and one couldn't take place at that time uh, due to COVID. And so through our special issue, which brought the presentations before they were held, uh, we could keep the discussion on. You can see here that we really try to cooperate with all parties. So I, uh, in the main, I edit this with Professor Akira Matsuda, from the University of Tokyo. So this Japan funded fora and our newsletter special issue went together very well. Next, please. Yeah, inspired by the two, um, the, the first forum in Paris inspired the SEA in cooperation with the preservation subcommittee and ACMO to develop the project preventive conservation and disaster prevention of documented heritage in Africa, a memory of the world guide. This is uh, in the responsibility of the CEO working group Africa. And as a, its coordinator, Papa de York, is, I think he's present in, in your conference. So he could answer questions. If you have any, it's much more competent, of course, than me to speak about that. The first version of this guide should be finalized soon. And we have the plan that this guide should be developed step by step, edition by edition to a handbook. So then these work would be institutionalized if the handbook really covers that. It could be used by all uh, young archivists, uh, old archivists too, by practitioners and students. Next, please. There's another, pro I think, proactive and innovative plan. In, in the general, member of the world cares about existing or lost documentary heritage. But this new project is about creating documents, keeping them sustainable while modifying their content according to changing needs and insight. We want to explore whether memory of the world can take part in or even be a stakeholder in international work for and research on the creation of sustainable information on nuclear waste. The impulse for this, for this came from uh, Jonas Palm, former chair of the um, subcommittee on technology. And uh, he's on board, of course, he's the expert together with another expert um, from Sweden. And this exploration will take place under a joint umbrella of SEER and the Preservation Subcommittee. I think here we can show that we can really go new ways if, if it will be successful and can carry about new questions, at least no, new for me, that are really uh, important for uh, whole humanity. And in a way, again, the, such a project could come close to peace building and it will have to cross borders, evidently. If you see, think in times of 100 years, 500 years, uh, and so on that are necessary. Next slide, please. And so I'll come to the next little project. It was a plan to create a manifesto for safeguarding the memory of translators in translation. The crucial significance of translators in translations for intercultural dialogue, for building bridges between languages, cultures, and countries is not matched so far by the way documents by and on translators in translations are collected and safeguarded in memory institutions, at least in general. For UNESCO, Translations are one of the three pillars of its language politics. Translations are essential for the fostering of cultural diversity and intercultural dialogue, for the communication of humanity in a time of ever increasing international exchange. While from that side, translations have a very high global significance, their status in documentary heritage is so far rather low. They don't play a significant role in memory of the world. But in the light of general acknowledgement of translations and translators, the memory institutions should be asked to step up their activities 
for the documentary heritage of translators and translations. This would be a great and sustainable help for future education and research. CIA, together with IFLA, ICLCM, in ICOM and others, develops a draft manifesto for memory of the world and UNESCO. So I thank you that for your kind attention. All the best for the ICDH, its staff, and the new building that you will open tomorrow. I wish you all a peaceful future. Thank you so much.